Amitabh Ghosh joins me now from here in Washington. He is a space scientist who has worked on NASA's Mars missions since 1997. Always great to see you. Absolutely. Same here. So a smashing future goal we heard just there, but let's take a quick look at a past milestone. China's Taikonauts back now two weeks after their six-month space station stay. What have we learned from them, and was it mission accomplished? Absolutely. So this is a huge deal, you know, learning to live in space, and the more countries that do it, the more we will learn. Um, so giving a perspective, man went to the moon in the 1970s, then the space station, we've kind of been stuck at the space station for the last 40 years, uh, but this is 250 miles from Earth. But we need to learn how to live in space. That's very challenging. Because the human body does not do well in space. Um, you see a sunset every 30 minutes because the, the space station is going around, um, around the Earth. Um, there is loneliness. There is lack of gravity. Um, all this requires humans to be trained to, in space. And so I think the Chinese space um, station was, is one more step in that direction for the human race to become comfortable in space. Yeah, physical and mental toughness there. China, though, wants to break a world record, more than 60 launches planned for the rest of 2022. That's a pretty big number. Is that logistically possible with so many? And what can we expect to see with all of these launches? Um, what, what are you hoping to see? Well, um, the number of launches are going up, um, and it will keep on going up. So as, and this is because um, um, the, the logistics of the launches have improved. And right now, we are reusing parts of the um, launch vehicle. So, for example, in, on, on the U.S. side, SpaceX is reusing that entire launch vehicle. And so that makes it easier uh, to, to recycle and go back. Second is, of course, the ambition of the space players have gone up, and they're achieving more and more things. There are more and more space projects, and that requires more and more launches. So overall, um, there is a very huge push to make space the next frontier. And I think in the next 10 years, the new developments in science and technology will come from space. And another new report I want to ask you about, China wanting to send a probe to collect samples from the far side of the moon, another first. What are the challenges there? Well, it's a very exciting frontier. First, let me tell you that. So as I was telling you that we've been stuck on the stuck on the Earth or on the space station for the last 50 years. And now we are going to go back with humans. And China is leading the way because they have this Changi set of missions starting from 2004, which have been hugely successful. So the, the goal of this mission would be to bring back um, samples from the far side. And this would help um, define, uh, uh, define the volcanism on the other side of the moon. But even more exci exciting is Changi 7, where they are saying they will go to the South Pole where the ice deposits are. And so any human presence on the moon will be on the South Pole where water is uh, required, where water is present since water is required for human existence. A lot of exciting stuff ahead. We always love getting your take and hearing what you are so excited about. Amitav Ghosh, great to see you again. Absolutely a pleasure.